What's up, YouTube? Have you ever wondered how the new native version of Illustrator runs on the M1 iMac? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. All right, so you might be thinking, wow, Ben, why did it take you so long to get this M1 iMac? Well, I don't know. Apple, I ordered on the first day and Apple took a long time to get it to me and they told me it would be here, you know, the first week of June and then all of a the sudden they were like, no, it's not coming until mid to late July and then all of a sudden it was coming in the middle of June. So I've had it for just about a week now, but I was doing some traveling, wasn't able to make a video like this for you guys. So this is it. This is the new yellow slash gold iMac that's here and I couldn't be happier with its performance so far. But today we're going to be trying out Illustrator. Adobe last week released the new native version of Illustrator for M1 chips. So that's a big deal. You know, that is what we have been waiting on to see how these are really going to stack up against the Affinity program. So today we're going to be taking a look at this. We're just going to be doing a simple test drive of Illustrator, testing out some of the features. And as you know, one of my favorite things to do is create vans. So we're going to be making another van just like we did when we were testing out the non-native version on the laptop. So we're going to go ahead and check that out today. We're going to see if the fans kick in here at all. I don't think they will. I haven't ever heard the fans run on this iMac. And I've been doing some motion graphic stuff, things that should really kick it in. So I don't think we'll hear that with Illustrator unless Adobe is doing something really wrong. And Adobe is claiming incredible performance adjustments on these new native versions. They're claiming things like 50 to 80% faster. So I've launched it here and it launched very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and dive in and take a look at how it works. Now I did post up in the community section if anyone had questions and I didn't get any questions in so we're just going to be looking at my questions but if you do have questions or things you'd like to see please drop those in the comments of this video and I'll try and get to them in a future video. Now that I've got my own machine running M1, we'll be able to do more videos about M1 related topics than we have been when I had to be borrowing my wife's laptop to do those. So go ahead and drop those in the comments and I'll try and get to them in a future video. So let's go ahead, dive in and see what's going on with Illustrator. So the first thing that we're going to do, of course, is just create a new document. So I'm just going to create new and go ahead and I'm just going to make this 1000 by 1000. I did have to use this for a project earlier, so I have looked at it a little bit. It was a really simple project, so I haven't tried out everything, but what I've seen so far was quite impressive. So I don't know if Adobe is completely blowing smoke on this one, but it definitely seems impressive. All right, so pretty snappy making the document. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and just start drawing some things. So let's draw a rectangle base of the van, switching tools, moving things around, all very snappy. And we're definitely not doing anything intensive, right? But there have been versions of Illustrator that have not been able to even handle some really simple tasks on some of the Intel iMacs. So let's keep going here. Let's round these corners out, grab our circles. Duplicate it. When I'm designing, it's always my preference to save things before I merge them. So I'll just grab this shape before I merge it. We'll grab the Shape Builder tool, everybody's favorite. Drag through there. Excellent. It's always good to have your shapes saved just so that if you need them later, for example, I might want to reuse this to create the window. If you're struggling with figuring out how to use shapes to make things, I've got a whole course that's free on Skillshare about that, so I'll link that below. It's a free course just on learning to see shapes and use your shapes. Some programs lend themselves better to this than others. Illustrator has the Shape Builder tool, which is excellent 
but Affinity Designer has a lot more pre-made shapes to start out with that can really help you. So if you're struggling with shapes in particular, it can be super useful to start with a program like Affinity Designer or something on the iPad or iPhone like Assembly because they just have so many more shapes available to you. You don't have to start out as much making your own shapes. So everything right now is just being incredibly snappy. This is so refreshing and it's so different than the illustrator that I was used to. Like I said, I was traveling last week, so I have a bunch of pictures that I had to edit like I normally do. And I was using Lightroom to do that and I was just kind of floored by how much fun it was to use Lightroom again when it actually works. These M1s, they're no joke. We already knew that, but these native versions of M1 are also no joke. Like running these programs natively on M1 makes such a difference. Even though we were seeing performance gains even on the emulated ones, this is just much better. Okay, so we're not having any trouble at all. And this is exactly what we would expect. We would not expect to be having any trouble here. All of the basics, it's handling like a champ. Let's go ahead and make a new artboard here and we'll color this guy in. So let's go ahead and try some colors. Let me go ahead and open up my color theme picker. I love the color theme features. One of my favorite features that Adobe has that a lot of other things haven't brought in yet. It just makes it so easy. So even though I don't love Adobe's business practices, having the color theme picker is super helpful. I was looking for Pennsylvania before I was actually, the assignment I was doing was working on redesigning the Pennsylvania flag just for kicks as like a little challenge because a lot of state flags are just so awful. Um, and Pennsylvania is where I spent two years as a missionary. So I was just doing a little redesign on their flag because it looks so bad. And I love the state so much. So let's go ahead and let's just search Volkswagen van. Okay, there we go. So here we have a vintage bus set. This is perfect. I love this. So we'll come in and we'll select our objects. Let's go ahead and let's just remove our stroke on everything. Okay, and that is a really cute looking bus. I just wanna try something else. When you're designing, it is so important that you just iterate, iterate, iterate. Always be trying new iterations of the thing that you're doing. So let's go ahead and let's try making a two-tone here. Okay, so absolutely no problem at all. So the next thing I wanna do is just test out some of the different tools, make sure everything's working good. So we'll just make a new blank artboard. This one's just for testing. And I wanna try out things like the blend tool because I know some people have questions about that. And that looks like it's working fine. Let's try. Doing something different here. Specified steps five. No problem there. Some people were concerned that I hadn't tried out the blend tool on my last look at Illustrator on an M1. So we're doing that here now. Go ahead and 
shrink these down. Now, obviously, we don't have tons and tons of layers and paths on this one, right? And so if you were doing a complex illustration, it might tax your system a little bit more, but in all honesty, this system's not being taxed at all. It's, it's not behaving like Illustrator in the least. Let's just try the type tool. Go ahead and make our type quite large. Change our font to our favorite quicksand. Okay, so no problems with simple text operations. That's pretty simple. Um, let's try out the pen tool. Okay, seems to be fine there. Working with the pen tool. And of course, if we applied hundreds or thousands of paths, it would be different. It would not be quite so snappy. Zoom is pretty snappy. It's not perfectly smooth, but it's pretty snappy. Again, a lot better than Illustrator was pre-M1 in my experience. So let's go ahead and let's go to Appearance, open up the Appearance panel, and let's try adding in some appearances and effects. So let's try a 3D. We're just trying to put on a bunch of things, see how it handles it here. Let's add in another stroke. Yellow, a new fill. Ruffin is a fairly intensive one. There we go. We pulled Ruffin up and we did get the beach ball. So that I believe is the first time we've seen the beach ball today as we applied this Ruffin effect. So that shows you that you can make the beach ball spin for a little bit here when you're trying an effect that takes quite a bit of processing power. You know, it's not perfect yet. Let's go ahead and let's try something where we have no fill. We've got a stroke. And then let's go ahead and try our width tool. Try out some different things here. That doesn't really look like anything, but that's kind of what we've got. So I consider this a pretty good round of testing out Illustrator here, but now I want to hear from you. Go ahead and drop in the comments. Let me know, are you using Illustrator on an M1? Let me know what you're thinking about it, what your experience is like, or if you're thinking about getting an M1, let me know that as well. Also, let me know other things that you'd like to see, either with the M1 or with Illustrator, other design programs. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. And don't forget to check out my courses in the description below. Some of them are free, like learning how to use shapes. So let me know what you're thinking. We'll chat in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.